Okay, how's everybody going today? Feeling good? Yep, yep. yep, glad to be here. Where are we? Queensland. Beautiful part of the world, isn't it? Yes. Yes. My name's Lou Harty and uh, I'd like to congratulate you for coming today. It's good to see so many people have actually arrived here for this, this uh, 21st Century Forex presentation. So today what we're going to do is I'm going to give you an intro onto probably one of the most leading financial products that's on the market today, which is 21st Century Foreign Exchange. Who here has heard of Foreign Exchange before or Forex trading? Excellent. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to give you an introduction about our chief financial strategist. His name is Kel Butcher. And later on I'm going to bring him up so he can give you some really great content. I'm going to try and explain to you or uh, educate you about what is Forex or foreign exchange, the benefits of trading foreign exchange and why a lot of people have chosen to actually use this as a trading instrument. I'm going to show you how you'll be able to trade anywhere, anytime, 24 hours a day, how to place a trade and how to profit from the largest financial market in the world. Now before anybody gives you some sort of uh, trading presentation. Um, that's my ASIC disclaimer. So that just really means that I can provide for you general advice but not specific. So if you have specific advice that you need, you need to see your accountant. However, there's my um, ASIC number. It just means that I've been authorised to provide this general advice. Okay, so who here, bef who here is trading? Trading anything? Who here is into property? Who here has got a business? Excellent. Now, what I've got here is just photos of people that I have modelled or emulated my businesses from. Now, I spent 20 years in the Australian Army and over that time, I sort of, I guess I was spending so much time away from my family and away from home and you know, so much time at work that I had to sit there and work out what I was going to do for the rest of my life. So I got onto Google. Do you guys have Google up here? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And what I did is I typed in things like how to make money, how to get rich, you know, how to sort of escape the rat race. Who here's done that? Yeah? And one thing led to another. It led to Jamie McIntyre's 21st Century Home Study course. So out of that time, I said to myself, once I did Jamie, Jamie's Home Study course, I said, all right, I want to get out of the army within 12 months. Right? I made that decision. I did his home study. I started trading options. Um, I started buying property, I started running a number of internet marketing businesses and then the majority of my wealth was created or the vehicle for it was created from actually trading. So, you know, going from options, e-minis, forex, whatever, whatever, whatever um, trading strategy I want to do. So who here did you say trades? So I've got any options traders, e-minis traders, CFD traders? Who agrees that trading is probably the fastest way to generate wealth? Absolutely. And that's why a lot of people do it. So the people that I have up on the screen are people that I've just modelled from. Just the same way as everybody models, you know, in order to get better than, than what they currently are. So for example, this guy here, Nick Halleck. Right? Nick Halleck was one of the, was pretty much instrumental in actually uh, teaching me how to trade from the very beginning, from start to finish. I knew nothing about trading. Like, there's a soldier at home and a mother sitting there working out how to trade. But once someone shows you the correct path and how to do it, then you're obviously going to get better. So there's a lot of people in this audience that are, are professionals at what, whatever you do. You know, there's doctors, lawyers, doctors, uh, soldiers, butchers, manicurists, whatever you are, beauticians, etc. I wouldn't be able to get out of my job and go into yours unless you showed me how. Who agrees with that? So trading is exactly the same. Um, and what, what we're going to do, hopefully, is we're going to enlighten you and show you the best way for you to do it in order for you to make some money so you can make better choices and better decisions. So these are people that I've modelled. A lot of them you'll recognise, internet marketers, and there's Kel Butcher in the centre there, and I'll bring him up shortly to, um, to give you some great, great content. Now, the reason I'm here is because I love educating people. The reason I started trading and making money because my income was capped in the military. Who's in a, a job now that their income is capped? You can't earn more. You know, it doesn't matter how skilled and trained you are, it is capped. Like, and being 20 years in the army, probably the last 10 years was my income only went up maybe $1,000 or $2,000 extra a year. You know what I mean? So I didn't, I had enough of that. I knew that I was worthy of earning a lot more money in order to do what, the things that I wanted to do. Who feels like that now? 
all of us, because it's a human nature to actually want more than what we have. So I had to make a decision. Okay, I want to get out of the army. I need to make more money. I need to spend time with my beautiful family. I need to make more money, and I need more time. Who is always chasing time? We sacrifice money for time, right? Time for money, sorry. So there's my images. Yours are similar. They've just got different faces, yeah? Okay, so today what we're going to talk about is it's not about trading my strategy, it's about following the guidance of other mentors. Now for me, his name here is Kel Butcher. So Kel Butcher here is a 21st century um, Forex strategist. Now he's got over 20 years trading experience and he's the author of two books, which uh, I'll show you shortly, and he's also a regular contributor to the your Trading Edge magazine. You may have seen it at magazine newsstands. So if you ever get a chance to read that magazine, it's a great read. He also mentors a lot of people and is a coach to a lot of people. And as I said, he's got 20 years trading experience. So if someone came up to you and said, okay, I've got a great coach. He's going to tell you how to play, play brilliant tennis and he's been playing tennis for 20 years. Who would like to take lessons off that person? Exactly, all of us would. Same as trading. He's got 20 years trading experience. He also has his own broking firm, software program developer, and he's also fully licensed in Forex stocks and futures. So his, his role is he leads a Forex advisory team, and their primary purpose is to sit in Sydney behind all these screens, and they love it. You know, geeks, technical guys, they just sit there, type, 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 check charts, analyse stock, That's the, analyse currency, analyse whatever's going on. That's their primary focus is in order to provide us the best signals in order for us to make money, yeah? So I'll bring him up shortly. So he heads the, the Forex team. He's got a lot of researchers. They're all licensed professional traders, fast direct market access, um, and a dedicated customer service team. So that's what you guys get at the moment, those people that have already enrolled in the Forex team. So there's one of his books that he's written. It's The 20 Most Common Trading Mistakes and How You Can Avoid Them. So for traders in the room already, you know, that would have been nice to have that book prior to that. And also there's the magazine. Um, each month it's a different issue. So whenever you go to the magazine stands, have a look at it and grab, grab yourself a copy. So if you look over to your right, you'll see him there at the moment. <laughs> and I'll bring him up in a second. Okay, so Forex stands for Foreign Exchange. Nice and simple, yep. So it's the arena where... One country trades its currency for, an, for, another, for another country uh, currency. Now, this is the largest financial market on the planet. There's nothing that beats this except the foreign exchange market. In actual fact, it trades over three to four trillion dollars a day. Try and get your head around that. Try and get your head around one trillion dollars a day. Who thinks that's a lot of money? It's actually 12 zeros. 12 zeros, yeah? So it's got no physical location. So you, um, it, is, it is run off um, a combination of uh, global banks, uh, large corporations and individuals trading. It was before the internet. No one could actually trade this. It was mainly just the big banks. They were just exchanging money for money, right? Whereas now it allows us to access it like you and I because it's all done electronically. All you need is your computer or a phone. Okay, whereas prior to the internet and prior to that, um, you, weren't be able to, you weren't able to do that. It was only just done by large corporations and banks. Okay, now the benefits of doing it is, one, it's massive liquidity. We've already just realised that it's, just explained that there's up to $4 trillion uh, exchanged daily on this. And it's 24 hours, 24 hours a day. So it's about five and a half days a week it's traded, so there's no, um, you know, staying up at night trading or, or um, deciding which times of the day to trade. It's 24 hours, so you can trade this, and that's probably why most people love to actually trade this market because it is so lucrative, and you've got the ability to trade it 24 hours a day. Who likes the idea of being able to select your own times to trade 24 hours a day? You know, it's great. It's got a lot of higher leverage. Now, uh, Kel's going to come up shortly and he's going to detail exactly what the leverage component of, of Forex trading is. And it means that you can instantly execute it on a trading dome, okay, electronically. 
Who here has a home, ba home based business? Excellent. This is the best one you'll ever have. Any trading home based business will make more money than standard traditional home based businesses. Now, before in the past, you know, 10, 15 years ago, there was always little party plan businesses. A trading business at home, this is going to be your office. This is your new office, your laptop, and your internet connection, and your backpack, right? That's going to be your trading, your, your office. Who likes the idea of that office? You don't, even need to, you don't even need to drive a car to it, right? You don't need a parking bay. That's it. My office is this. I'm an internet marketer and a professional trader. This is my office, my laptop and my internet connection. Smile. That's it. Okay, who wants to see what a trillion dollars looks like? I'll just pull some out of no. Okay, this is what $10,000 looks like. $10,000. 10000 US dollars. So there we have a pile of um, $100 US, US notes. That's what $10,000. So if you're holding $10,000, that's what it looked like. That's what a million dollars looks like. Okay. Oh, where'd he go? That's what a million dollars looks like. This is what $100 million looks like. Who likes the idea of that? Who could handle one of those pallets in the back shed? <laughs> what about a billion? Billion dollars. That's what a billion dollars looks like. Now this is one trillion dollars, right? And how much does the foreign exchange go through each day? Three to four. That's right. This is one trillion dollars. This is what one trillion dollars looks like. And we know that the, the foreign exchange market goes to three or four thousand. See the little man down there? And there he is there. That's one trillion dollars. So four of those is exchanged daily. So who would like to come and get their cut of the foreign exchange market? Yeah. Trade money for money. Who wants to be the bank? <laughs> Absolutely. So the traders in the room already, you know how lucrative it is to trade anyway. But being able to access something that is so liquid, so fluid, the big banks are doing it, they've been doing it for years, I reckon we should take our cut of it. Who agrees? Put your hands up really high if you really agree. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> oh yeah, traders are that cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to briefly just go through the currencies. As, as I said to you at the start, it's one country's uh, trading currencies for another country's currency. So you've seen a lot of these countries' currencies. Those words are so similar. So we've got, we've got the US dollar, we've got the European, Great Britain, Great uh, British pound, Japanese yen, Swiss franc, Australian dollar. We also have the Canadian. Now down the bottom here, down the bottom here are what are known as popular pairs. So if you see there, you've got Australian US, Euro US, etc. Pretty much anything with US dollar in it is probably the ideal way to trade. Right? I'll give you a classic example. Is I, I just came back from Antarctica um, about a, two weeks ago. I went with Jamie McIntyre and a team of others. Any here in the room came to Antarctica with us? Doesn't matter, we're going again in February if you want to come. <laughs> um, and, you know, you can go to virtually any country in the world, right? It doesn't matter what currency they're using, but they will always take the US dollar. Now, at the end of our, we were on a Russian icebreaker, right? We were going through the Drake Passage to get to Antarctica, and then we did some ice climbing, some kayaking, things like that. On the way back, come back on a Russian boat, a ship. And at the end, they, they ask for a gratuity check, you know, so like maybe a, a tip, I guess, for the, for the wonderful service they provided. However, all the Aussies came with pesos because we just came from South America, all right? So we'd spent some time in Buenos Aires, etc. But what they didn't take is uh, it said US and Euros only. So these poor Russians, they thought the Australians, you know, weren't very um, generous because... We had no euros or US to give. We only had pesos, but they didn't want pesos. Oh, well, they're lost. You know what I mean? So, you know, there are countries that you'll go to that, you know, I could take pesos from here and, and take it to Coles and they'd go, you're dreaming. But if it was a US dollar, they would take it. Does that make sense? So if you're going to trade, these are the popular pairs, so you always trade 
predominantly a, a really strong dollar. Something's got a strong dollar with, with this good value. Who here's been overseas before? Travelled? Okay, you've got your bags. Maybe you've got some kids. Come on, let's go. What's the first thing that you do when you come to the airport or get out of the airport or before you leave? Change your money. What are we looking for? Are we looking for the lowest dollar or what? <coughs> what are we looking for when we go to change our money? The best exchange rate. And why is that? So we can buy more stuff with our money. Yeah? So even though you, a lot of you think that you don't know foreign exchange, you do it every single time you travel. You know what I mean? And on the news at night time, when you watch the financial market review, we always prick our ears and we go, oh, wow, the Aussie dollar is what? What's the Aussie dollar now? Around about what? 93. See, look how educated you are. 93, 92 something. So who thinks that is a really good, good rate for our dollar? That's good. It's consumer confidence, jobs, travel, perfect time to start foreign exchange trading with our Australian dollar. Yep. So you already know how to do it without even knowing the technicals of it. Does that make sense? Excellent. Okay, so yeah, they're the currency, popular pairs. And, um, and Kel's going to show you exactly how we do these trades shortly. So when we are uh, uh, working at the measurement or how we make money from a currency change, it's known as um, a PIP, price index point. And it's the unit that measures one unit change in interest rate. So, for example, up, up there, the value is around $10 US per pip, but it can be altered to suit. So, here we've got one pip equals $1. Or no, it's known as a mini pip. Right, so for those e-minis traders, we know that in order to make money, it's a point. Or if it's buy and hold stock, we're just waiting for the price increase or the price decrease in order for us to make our money. Right? But for foreign exchange, it's known as a pip. So if it goes up two pips, down two pips, whatever. So that's, that's the terminology with it we use. So one pip equals one dollar, or it's known as a mini pip. Now, we can also set it at ten dollars a pip, right? which is known as a standard pip. So you can either trade as a standard pip or a mini, chip, mini pip. So $1 pip is a mini, and $10 is a standard pip. Now this, this is just a one cent price movement. So if the price goes up one cent, it has gone equal to 100 pips. Now depending on how you set it, whether it's $1 or at $10, but it can also go less than that as well, and Kelly will explain that shortly. Now I've got an example here. Now we've taken a view that the Australian dollar um, is is going to increase in price against the US dollar. So who remembers when the Australian dollar was around 70, 70 cents? Yep. And it, it does that. Um, we've got the view that it's going to go up, right? So in this example here, it's at 70 cents. The price goes up to 71 cents. So that is a, one, a whole 100 pip movement. Can everyone see that? Yep. So just say we'd, we had... The, um, it's set at $10 a pip. Now you can have it at one, as I mentioned before, or you can have it at $10 a pip. So that is a profit of $1,000. So that, that's because it's moved only one cent. Now I've kept it at round numbers to sort of keep it basic, right? It started at 70, it's gone to 71, that's a whole 100 pip movement. We've set it at $10 a pip, okay? So that's a thousand dollar profit on one cent movement. Now, it continues to rise. The Australian dollar continues to rise against the US. It goes up another 50 pips. Can everybody see that it's gone up 50 pips? 100 to 150 equals 50 pips. We've still got it set at the same thing at $10 a pip. And that gives us a profit of $500. And that's just moving half a cent. Make sense? Excellent. Okay, so the Australian dollar has continued to rise because Kel's told us, based off his special indicators uh, and, and a lot of different uh, market conditions. So 71, it's now gone up to 7175. So that's how it's written. That's how it's written. And normally when you trade with our system, you'll either get an SMS or an email and it'll tell you exactly where we want you to place the trade, what, what's it at, the currency. Firstly, the currency. 
uh, where it's trading at and where we want you to profit at. Okay, so it's gone up 175. That equals 75 pips. It's still set at $10 a pip. Okay, so your profit for that is $750. Now, if you had set, set it prior to that, so before you even start trading, you may deposit, say, $5,000 into your bank account. Um, Kel will ring up and say, well, I, think, I suggest we, we set it at $10 a pip or $5 a pip or $2 a pip or $1 a pip, $1 a pip. So if you had set it at $1 a pip, that means that you've just made $75. Does that make sense? Okay, and that was the mini. Whereas the micro is $10, uh, sorry, the, the standard is $10 a pip and you would have profited $750. Now we've taken a long-term view of this, so we've started at 71 cents.